on this episode of Carnage, we're putting together a budget 2JZ. So last time you saw this engine, it was a stock 2JZ GE motor. That means non-turbo. So dead stock motor. We pulled it all apart to make sure that it was all good inside. It was all good, you know, comparatively so. Uh, but the problem with the GE motor, the non-turbo motor, is they have weak rods when they're combined with the VVTI head. All right? Earlier engines without the VVTI have heavy duty rods, same as the turbo motor, right, which is a GTE motor. So we're gonna convert this GE motor into a GTE, so from non-turbo non to turbo by adding a set of turbo rods and pistons, which we picked up cheap second hand. So stock bore size. So what we've done is we've done a garage hone. I don't need to show you really that because we've done it a million times. So carnage garage hone, we've done that. We've already checked up all the uh, rods and bearing clearances, you know, the main clearances, the rod bearing clearances, we've checked all those. We've added ARP rod bolts to the rods. So basically today is going to be us slapping this bad boy together so it can go back in the trial bow and run mid to low nines. That'd be exciting, wouldn't it? So anyway, let's get to it, get this party started and uh, yeah, explain what we've done so far. So most of the parts I've got for this build I've got through Golbys who are kind of the Jay-Z specialists here in Australia. And I'm using ACL bearings, which I do prefer. Now when I first mic'd up the crank and measured up the first set of bearings I got, uh, they came in very tight. So what I've done is I've bought some HX series bearings, so oversized bearings. And we're gonna use those because uh, they give us a little bit more clearance. I would prefer a little bit loose rather than too tight. Too tight, you'll burn up the oil and your bearings and your engine pretty fast. So I've gone with a little bit more extra clearance being that this is gonna be for a race motor with a lot of boost. We'll probably run a slightly thicker oil, like a race oil, but um, yeah, that's the way we're gonna go. So I'll start by lubing things up. Oh yeah. The keen-eyed viewers may have noticed that uh, we're putting, we've put main studs in it, so ARP main studs. The factory main cap bolts are torque to yield, so can't reuse them. So we put six of the main caps in. We haven't bolted them down tight yet. They're semi-tight. And I've left the middle one out because that's the thrust bearing. And instead of the thrust bearings being built into the bearing as they are on most engines, the thrust bearings are separate like these. These are the ones for the block. These are the ones for the caps. And they have to be sort of lubed up and slipped in there, which is a fun operation. So let's work this out. I haven't done this one before, but as you can see, the crank floats back and forth right now. Well, we need to put these in to stop that from happening.
Okay, so we've got those thrust bearings in there. We'll check the end float in a sec, but um, I probably should have done them a different way. I just had a look at someone's video on the net and they basically used the lube to glue them to the sides of the, uh, the journal um, in the block and then drop the crank in. That probably would have been easier than trying to rotate them around with the crank, which was a bit of a ball ache to be honest. So anyway, it's all in, it's done lesson learned anyway all right let's talk it all up and then we'll check the end float okay so they're all done 60 foot pounds so all new main studs Crank moves freely. That's pretty good. All right, let's check in float. Ah, fun. Give it a quick knock back. So we've measured our thrust clearance. We've come up at 0 0.06 of a mil, which is confusing because we've got some metric gauges and imperial gauges, and I tend to work in imperial anyway. That comes up as two thou of clearance, which is well within the range. The manual says it's between eight ten thousandths and eight thousandths, which is a massive range, but we're well within that. Two thou, it's probably at the tighter end of the scale, but they are brand new bearings, and I have got lube in there as well. You probably should measure them as they're dry. But anyway, and you may have noticed that before I tighten that cap down, I smack the crank back and forth to help locate the, uh, the thrust and the cap properly because they aren't dowled and they kind of need to be, you know, located properly and the crank kind of helps position that. So anyway, that's good to go. That's all torqued down. Crank is in, it spins freely, which is good. So it turns over freely so we are ready to flip this over and start putting some rods and pistons in it beauty so here we are with our rods and pistons so we're going to be using turbo pistons turbo rods all right that's what a turbo piston and rod looks like that's a na piston and rod and as you can see the rods are much weaker and thinner, so we won't be using those. So factory turbo rods and pistons, ARP rod bolts, ARP 2000s they are. So they will be nice and strong and 800 to 1000 horsepower at the crank is not unheard of out of this, this sort of combo. So if we make power up around that range, we'll be very happy. First set of rings I bought were not very good because as soon as I put them out of the box and tried gapping them, they came up at 24, 26 thou, uh, which is way too much for an 86 mil bore. So we um, contacted a part supplier and said, do you have anything else in an 86 mil? And they sent us some uh, NPR rings, so Nippon Piston Rings, uh, Japanese company, and they were fantastic i mean the rings themselves look amazing and they gapped up really nicely um, i've obviously filed them and come up with i think 20 and 22 thou so 20 on the top ring 22 on the second and i think that'll be a good size for us because we're going to throw a lot of boost at this thing oil rings we're putting them on now i've got to say i really dig this part they've like got a little joiner wire between the ends of the oil rings just to keep them from overlapping or anything. So I really, that's a really neat feature. I really dig these rings. I don't usually get excited about piston rings, but I say these NPR rings are brilliant, really nice. We'll use again for sure. Okay, so let's line up our rings. Where do we have our gap there? So let's put that there. Just make sure when you're doing your rings that you put them on appropriate to where they need to be. Some rings, 
If they're not marked, they can go either way. But these ones have a little mark on the top, which means that is the top of the ring. So. Right, done. Got some spare rings there. Next time I don't have to buy another pack instead of two packs. Anyway, I don't think there'll be a next time for a while. Right, after lunch, we're gonna put some rods and pistons in. So we are back from lunch and we're just uh, undoing the rod bolts off our rods. One day I'll have to get a proper rod vice. Right, so now it's time to put our pistons and rods in. Uh, I'm going to put some oil in a little ice cream container. Dip, flip, in they'll go and then we'll talk them up. Not going to bother with rod bolt stretch indicator because it actually doesn't fit into the 2J setup very well. Uh, I'm just going to go with the straight torque settings. So we'll do that. Alrighty, let's get set up. So piston orientation is pretty simple. Dot to the front. Doesn't get any simpler than that. So it is critical though, because you need the right valve reliefs on the right side of the engine. So exhaust and intake, see the intake reliefs are slightly bigger. And then also you need the squirter on the rod facing the right way as well. So anyway, let's dip it. I don't know if I'm getting enough. So we're just having a little bit of drama with our ring compressor here. Because the ring, the clamps come in different sizes. This is an 86 mil piston. And this clamp is 86 to 92. So not 86 being right at the bottom end of the scale. And we're just, I don't know that we're getting full clamp on the rings to allow it to slide in. Yeah, there we go. Just had to squeeze it really tight. Okay, so we've got that in there. All the way to the bottom. So if you remember, all these uh, main cap bolts were 60 foot pounds. Well, the rod bolts are 65 foot pounds. Work that one out. But anyway. Let's do them up evenly.
So there we have it. Pistons, rods, crank, they're all in. Now, I can't do a lot more today because um, we've got to go get the head. The head is ready though. It's with Gerardo at GeForce Racing Solutions. So I've got to go pick it up off Gerardo. Um, and I've got to drop this sump stuff off to Ray Haddad at Russell Oil Pans so he can do our oil pan side of things. But that is the core short block done, you know, ready to go. So yeah, join us tomorrow when we uh, put the head on, set the cams up and all that sort of stuff. Actually, I'm waiting on some buckets, so we won't be able to do the cam straight away, but we can put the head on, oil pump, all that sort of stuff. And um, yeah, that'll round out the rest of the video. But anyway, join us tomorrow. And it's a brand new day. We have our rods, pistons, crank, all in our 2JZ block. And now we're gonna get down to the nitty gritty of what's involved in making this a 1.5JZ, right? So one JZ head on a 2JZ block. Now, you might imagine that it's pretty simple, just bolt head to block, but no. There is an oil passage right here at the back of the block, all right? So 2JZ, that's where it is. On a 1JZ, it is on the head further out, very close to the edge of the block, too close in fact. So what they have to do, if we look at our head over here, is they have to weld up the original oil hole and then angle it across so it matches the 2JZ gasket. Why they made them different, who knows, but they did and it makes it a little bit more difficult than just bolting the head to the block. So yeah, basically we've had that oil passage welded up, re-drilled so it lines up with the 2JZ gasket. So now with our new gasket, we can put head onto block and all will be good with the world. So let's get down to doing that. So here is our genuine Toyota MLS gasket and there's the oil hole up the back. So we'll just drop her on like so. I've already cleaned the deck surface and I've flattened it with a stone. All the gear, I mean, in a perfect world, we would have machined this block properly, you know, spent a couple grand doing all the uh, various things. but. We're tight asses. we're doing this on a budget, we're showing you how to do it on a budget, and I'm pretty sure this is gonna work out fine. It certainly has, for the last half a dozen motors I've done, hasn't it? So, look at Superman. Smash that together in the garage. Last weekend I had it on six and a half thousand RPM for minutes at a time. It'll be fine. Anyway, of course, if you have the budget, do it properly. Let's get our head. Ugh flipsy doozies right. where are you there we go down we go now it's got to be said there is absolutely no performance benefit to doing this from the get-go like if you had a 2JZ bottom end and a 1JZ head there's no performance reason to do this the reason is all about cost so if you had a 1JZ in a car and you had all your you know nice manifolds like we've got a nice exhaust manifold we've got a standard intake manifold but we have all the intercooler plumbing and all that is there to suit the 1JZ head that's the reason to do this. I mean, this head was reconditioned and you know, it's set up with valve springs, the whole thing. So to start afresh would cost us serious money. We'd have to buy a new exhaust manifold because the manifolds are different, new intake manifold, you know, because the GE intake manifold is different. You know, so we would have to spend probably the best part of $5,000 to buy all new manifolds and springs and that sort of thing to do the 2JZ head. We already have a 1JZ head, we already have 1JZ manifolds, so it's a lot cheaper for us to put this 1JZ head on a 2JZ block, so that keeps it all good for when it goes back in the car. We add half a litre capacity, so there is a performance benefit from that side of things. So we should get more power out of this than we did out of the 1JZ, 
But if you're starting with a 2JZ block and a 1JZ head, I'd say don't bother. If you've got to buy everything, you know, might as well start with a 2JZ head. That's the way to do it. So that's the reasoning behind this. Because a few people are like, you know, is, do the heads flow better? No, they don't. Their ports are smaller, to be honest. But, you know, you're throwing so much boost into it, it's going to make power. Anyway, now we need to put our studs in. But before you put the studs in, you've got to do washers first because it's impossible to get your washers in there when the studs are already in. All right, it's physically impossible. So you've got to insert your washers first, then screw in your studs, and then the nuts, and then torque it down. Just a little trick. Let's get our washers in. So I'm not being OCD just laying out all my washers like this. There is a top side and a bottom side to a washer, certainly on these ARP ones. The top side has a slightly rounded edge. The bottom side has a sharp edge. So you want to go sharp edge down. So put it in that way. And that's what we're going to have to do for, what is it? 14 different holes. So it's time to torque up our head studs. We've got to get to 80 foot pounds. So I'm going to do it in three steps. Uh, we'll start off at 50. We're done. So we've got our head on, torque down. We've pretty much, we've got our long block assembled. We're gonna do the buckets, the cams and all that next. However, when I pulled the buckets out, because it's converted to shimless buckets, um, when I pulled the buckets out, I noticed that a couple of them have marks just in the top and while they're not deep, just enough to catch a fingernail on. So I want to put new buckets on some of these. So I've ordered half a dozen new buckets in the sizes that we need. They come in all different sizes. So these are um, 5.4s. So yeah, they'll be here shortly. We'll get them in, we'll get the cams in, we'll do our oil pump, water pump, all that sort of stuff. Uh, I've also sent the sump off to Ray and George Haddad at Russell Oil Pans and they're going to uh, rejig the pickup and the sump and everything to basically control the oil better so we don't have a repeat of our issue with the 1JZ. They did something similar with the Mazda. Remember we did an enlarged oil pan for the Mazda and its oil pressure is mint now. It launches, launches hard and maintains good 80 psi oil pressure all the way through the run which is what you want obviously we want to do the same thing with this but we'll get that sump and stuff next week we'll probably get the shimless buckets by the end of the week so i guess next week we'll be finishing off our 1.5 jz build and you'll see that on a future episode of carnage